Hey guys, in this video we're going to put a new turn signal switch and key lock cylinder in the budget Nova steering column. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Alright, so we got the budget Nova steering column right here. Now this thing needs a new turn signal switch because this one's been cut into and hacked up. And I need a new lock cylinder because I do not have a key to this one. So I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart, change the key lock cylinder and the turn signal switch. Now, the steering wheel is already off of this. Taking the steering wheel off is fairly easy. There's a nut that goes on there. The steering wheel puller, it pulls right off. There's other ways to do it that might damage your steering column, so I'm not going to show you that, but it involves a hammer. And I have messed up more than one steering column before doing that, so I'm just not going to show you. But you can do this in the car probably easier, but I can't film it in the car easier, so I've got the steering column out. Now, the reason it's easier in the car is because the steering column won't move around. If it's bolted in and all the work you're doing is up here, is much, much easier because nothing will move around on you. Uh, hooking up the ignition switch and stuff like that's harder in the car, but for filming purposes, we're gonna do this on the table. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is get your steering wheel removed from the column. Now this is way, way, way easier when it's in the car because the car being, uh, the steering column being bolted to the car holds everything still. So you got one nut that holds the steering wheel on the column. Once this nut is on there, it's probably pressed on a little bit and maybe a little bit rusty, but they make steering wheel pullers and you can also use a trick that I probably wouldn't use very often and use a hammer, but I'm not even gonna tell you how to do that. Get the steering wheel off, put that stuff to the side, now you've got the column right here. Now you have a retaining plate and a lock ring that sits in a groove on the, on the column, on the shaft, right there, that holds that retaining plate in place. So we're gonna use a special tool to push this plate down, get the lock ring off, and get everything taken apart. All right, so you're gonna take your little special tool here, and this tool threads onto the shaft. And I make a couple of different styles, but this tool will thread onto the shaft right there. You want to make sure you have a few threads engaged so you don't pull any threads off, but it doesn't have to be tightened down on there. And then you want to tighten up the wing nut right here, and that pushes this piece down, and then you can get to the little lock ring that is around the shaft. I'll try to turn this so you can see. And then when I tighten it down, a little space opens up in there and see that there's a little bit of a space. All right. So what you want to do when you get that pressed down like that, you want to take a pick, get your little thin screwdriver that's kind of stiff because the pick probably won't be stiff enough. Go in here and pry that lock ring out and then you want to pry it forward and get it coming back to you like that. And once you get it started, you can use the screwdriver to pry it farther away, all the way around. And the last little piece that you gotta get loose is usually the hardest one. And there it went. So I'm gonna keep this over here so that I can uh, keep it from sliding back on. And we'll get around to the back side. And now, I've got the whole thing. now I can take the pressure off of this lock nut right here, or off of this uh, nut right here. And that's gonna let the whole thing come out past where the lock ring was. And then I can unscrew my tool. Now I can slide my locking plate off. That's for your steering lock, that little button right there grabs this, that's what locks your steering. And you'll pull your little lock ring off with this right there. And then your horn, horn button stuff is right here. And that'll slide up. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. And you got a spring under that. And this contact right here rides on this copper button right here with a spring on it. This button right here. This button right here rides on that. And that goes to your horn button. And when you push it, it grounds it and activates your horn. So we're going to put that over there. 
and that's bad. We're gonna have to get a new uh, that piece right there is bad. So you can change just that piece, which I've got a spare one right here somewhere. Now what you want to do is you want to take your turn signal uh, cancel cam and all that stuff out. So we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to have to take the lever loose. And we got three screws we got to take loose on the inside. All right. We're going to take our lever off. Screw out, save that over there. Save the screw by the lever so you know which one goes where. Now, you've got three screws in here. Sometimes one of them be hard to get to because the um, your cam or your activator, whatever you call it, your lever inside, your plastic lever, will cover up the screw. But you take these three screws out. One there, one here. And this is somewhat easier to do in the car because you're sitting down in the driver's seat and the steering column won't move around on you. And then you got another screw right here. screws in there, pull them out, but the cam, the cam will come out a little bit there. And now what you're going to pay attention to is when you do that, your turn signal switch, section down here, that's all put together. So if you need to change your turn signal switch, you have to fold this part up the best you can. Get it, get all of this to slide through. Now, if, you, if you're just taking it out, you want to try to get it to fold through there and not cause any trouble. If you're changing it, you can cut all this off and it comes out really easy. But I'm changing this one, but for the sake of trying to show you how to do it, um, it's got some crimp terminals on there, so I'm not sure I can get it out, but we're going to try. But you kind of keep it pointed that direction. may not be able to get it out just because of those wire connectors. Alright, I did get it out and I pulled the wire connector or two off. So I have to make sure I get that out of it. Alright, I think I got this where you can see it and I can do it at the same time. I'm not sure. Alright, so we're going to reach in here and we're going to pull your, it's already out a little bit, but you're going to have this little tab right here. This is your key buzzer switch pull that out now there's a slot there's one here it's not one worried about and there's one back in here and uh, one right in here and the cylinder has a little square or long button on it rectangle button and you're going to want to push in on that and pull out on the cylinder at the same time and the cylinder could be stuck so you might have to pull it a little harder, but you can see the button, and when you push it in, it'll press. I'm going to pull on the cylinder at the same time. Alright, so the button pulled down, the cylinder moved a little bit, so now I should be able to pull the cylinder out. Like that. And this is that button that I was pushing on the cylinder. And you don't need a key to do this, I do this without the key. Alright, now that you have your old key cylinder out, you can either take this to a locksmith and have him make you a new key for it if that's what you want to do, or you can go ahead and install your brand new key cylinder, lock cylinder, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can see right here on the back, that's all the way off because it's got to stop right here. And then if you push in and turn backwards, it lets it go past that stop and that's your accessory on. Not all ignition switches have that, but uh, some do. So anyway, there's your locking tab. Key in or out, it doesn't matter. Your lock tab is going to go there. This right here lines up in the slot in the bottom of the hole there. So we're just going to take this, line up at the bottom, 
push it in and you want to look inside there and make sure your locking tab is poking back out and then you're done and this you can see where it locks your steering wheel in place when you turn the key on it lets the steering wheel lock go right there now it's time to put the turn signal switch back in now we've got our old switch right here and it's probably functional up here but it had been splicing stuff down here so we are not going to reuse it we're going to put a brand new one in um, and you don't have to remove this completely if you're just changing the key cylinder once you get this in here you can fold this out of the way and you can do everything i did with the key cylinder but what we're going to do is we're going to try to take this guard off and slide it over the new one and then we're going to fish the new one down in there bolt it in place and then we're ready to install the column all right, so I've got a brand new Made in USA turn signal switch. High quality, looks just like the original one. And this one is probably made by GM, but I'm not certain. Um, so we're gonna take this, put our plastic shield on it, try to snake it down in there, and I'll show you how that's done. It's, it's, with this on there, it's much easier sometimes than it is with just trying to turn this sideways and push it down through the column. There. That was just uh, was a pain in the butt. Alright, so now that you've got your cover back on it, and I've taken a lot of them out that don't have this cover, and I've taken this cover off and chunked it and put a lot of them back in without it. But if you got it on there, it's always good to have it on because it stiffens up the wires and makes them much easier, usually, to get through the column. So we're going to turn our connector this way, push it in. Sometimes the wires bunch up, especially if you've got two extra ones like that one does and then sometimes it helps to push something in there and now we're back out the other side and we can reinstall our turn signal switch like so um, and you'll probably have to get if it's a new one it's going to be kind of stiff and all that stuff so you'll have to get the wires to to bend a little bit to try to get them get it in there just right right like that there now we put the screws back in it and then you can also put your hazard uh, switch knob back in which I didn't have one of this one I took it apart so you didn't see me take it out because I didn't have one But this new switch came with a new knob for the hazard button. Turn the right blinker on so we can uh, get to our screw hole. And I don't always, I usually don't tighten them all the way down while I'm uh, putting them in until I get all of them in and get make sure that switch is sitting in there somewhat square. And then it is plastic and the, the column is kind of like made out of pot metal. And it's a Phillips head screw. So you don't want to strip anything out or break anything. So you, it doesn't have to be super, super, super tight. And they usually bottom out and that's when they stop. You don't have to tighten it anymore. So now we've got that in there. We can start putting our column back together. Now let's turn the blinker back off. We're going to put our lever back in. There. All right. that on all right now that you got your horn button on or your horn contactor on you can put your lock plate on make sure your splines are lined up it's got a, a large spline right at the top right here I've got my large spline on top here and 
got to move this horn contactor around a little bit till it's in the right spot. There we go. Then you want to take your lock ring, go ahead and put it on there. I usually put it down to the first, the first big groove so it can't slide back off. And you can go ahead and get it a little farther on there if you want to, but um, I just usually go with the with the first groove on it. Go ahead and get our tool put back on. And then you start tightening down the other part and compressing your lock plate. And you want to compress it until you get it past the groove where the lock ring goes. And if you can kind of see, I'm not sure if the cameras will pick it up, there's a, a groove where your lock ring goes right there. So the plate's got to be past that so you can easily get your lock ring in. And we'll try to turn this to where you can see. Alright, let's see if we can get this lock ring on without poking myself in the finger again because that really hurt. I stuck this right into my thumb. And that sucks. So, you want to get lock ring started the best you can. Kind of like that. And then once you get it pushed open, spread open in, which is right here, spread open, then you can kind of just walk the rest of it down there with the screwdriver. And sometimes you have to push both sides at the same time because it'll just wobble back and forth if you don't. And like I said, this is really much, much easier. This part is much easier in the car because the collar will not move. All right. Lock ring is fully seated all around. Take the pressure off my tool. And we're done. All right, so now for your actual ignition switch. Now this is an old one. I'm gonna put it on for the moment because I don't have my brand new one with me. Um, your key cylinder right here actuates this rod right there. So as your key moves, this rod moves. And what you do is your ignition has a slot in it where this rod pokes up into. You put that on there, put two bolts in here, tighten it down, and then as you turn your key, it actuates all the positions of your ignition switch. Alright, now this down here, this is actually your neutral safety switch and your reverse light switch. I can't remember which one of these is which, but you have an actuator that's down inside of the column there that goes into the bottom of this switch and it activates this. So since this was a column shifter, when you turn the key on and you turn the actual column here, well, I can't do it because it's laid down. And I'm holding one hand with the cameras there. When I turn the column like that, it activates a set of contacts here here. This is your reverse contacts, and this contact is either closed in neutral. I think this is your neutral safety switch. This one is closed in park and in neutral, and it's open everywhere else, so it'll keep you from starting the car. This one is only closed when you're in reverse, and that's activated by the column thing. Now, here's a, here's a thing. In 19, from 1968 or whatever up to 1971, at least on the third gens as far as I know, they used a separate neutral safety switch from the column. So if you have a floor shifter, an automatic floor shifter in like a 69 or 70, the neutral safety switch was actually on the shifter, not on the column. In 72, I believe, and it might have been 73, my 73 is definitely this way. When you have the factory floor shifter, the floor shifter, the neutral safety and reverse light switch was still up here on the column, but what they did was they ran column shift linkage up all the way in here and when you move the floor shifter it actually turns part of the column 
for your indicator and activate your neutral safety switch. So they changed it. So depending on the year you have, you may not have a neutral safety switch here if you originally had a floor shifter. All right, so that's pretty much what's involved in changing your key lock cylinder, whatever you want to call it, and your turn signal switch. Now, um, if you needed to change the bearings in your steering column and you ordered some of those and found them, then you could do that at the same time because that shaft comes out. It's not too bad. These were great, so I didn't mess with them. Uh, there's, you can also grind off the uh, column shift lever if you wanted to, smooth that out. There's things you could do to it, but a lot of that is better done with it out of the car. Whereas, like I said before, this is much easier to do in the car when you're dealing with all the stuff on top because the car, being mounted in the car, keeps it from moving. So anyway, working on the budget Nova, trying to get it done because it's sold and he's waiting on it and I'm way behind. So we're going to get this thing wired up, going to make a few more videos on it, get it delivered to him, and he's going to love it, I hope. Um, but yeah, so got a deal made on that. Uh, when I get done with it, get it running and driving, going to deliver it. So got a few more videos we're going to do on it. I'm thrashing to get it ready, and we'll see you guys in the next video.